Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Stay with me. Shalom. And today we're talking about how Thanksgiving is the mark of the beast. Mmm, okay. Now I brought Stacy in because when I told her that Thanksgiving was the mark of the beast, she expressed a little bit of confusion. <laughs> and being the representative for all of the church ladies around the world. Okay. <laughs> we figured if she's a little bit confused, then there's somebody else that may not understand how these pagan holidays, all of them are the mark of the beast. Yeah, I can understand um, about Christmas, you know, Halloween, um, Easter, but, you know, Thanksgiving is such a neutral holiday. It's, you know, it's sort of just neutral. Everybody is giving thanks, quote, to the Father. And so I'm very interested in finding out how Thanksgiving is the mark. And I appreciate you saying, expressing how we believe that it was neutral. I, until this day, too, thought it was neutral. But our father has been working with me on something, even in a dream last night. And I knew there was something going on. And when I started praying about it, I was led in this direction to look up to see how neutral Thanksgiving actually is. And it turns out it's not neutral at all. You know, when I would ask... Um if it would be okay for us to go up to my grandmother because we always got the invite to join them for their Thanksgiving dinner. And um, I think a couple of when we first moved back, a couple of times we did, but you would always express that, you know, that's not necessarily something that you wanted to do. And now lately, uh, for the last few years, we haven't been going and um, I just even stopped asking. Yeah. There was something about Thanksgiving. Something about Thanksgiving. Well, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a little bit of history to show that Thanksgiving is the mark of the beast. All right. So first of all, we're going to look at Thanksgiving in America. Okay. Going all the way back to the pilgrims who first celebrated Thanksgiving here on the United States soil, what we now call the New World. Yeah, that's the story that we got uh, growing up in school about the Indians and the pilgrims. And the Indians and, and the pilgrims celebrated it together. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing about the pilgrims, we understand that they were coming to the New World because of religious persecution. Right. Mm -hmm. In other words, they were wanting to continue their faith and in order to do so, they felt like they had to come over here on the Mayflower in order to do their feast days or their religion the way they wanted to. Right. When we're looking over at this document from Wikipedia on Thanksgiving, we see that the pilgrims first celebrated Thanksgiving in October of 1621. Oh, okay. You're not surprised that it wasn't November? I am. Yeah, that's a big deal. And that's going to be the main point of this class is that they celebrated in October instead of November, because that tells us what Thanksgiving was, what it actually is. OK, we know it was a harvest festival mm -hmm. and we already talked about how these people were coming to the new world so that they could celebrate their feast days when they wanted to. Mm -hmm. So as it turns out, what they were celebrating was tabernacles, mm -hmm. the Feast of Tabernacles. So you're saying that they came over here to celebrate their their faith, their feast days, and turned out that the feast days that they were, they were celebrating was tabernacles. Well, that seems like a good thing. It absolutely is a good thing. But before we go on and find out why it changed to November, let's have a quick recap on how the sacred calendar works. Okay. We're looking here at the faceplate that we're working on for our new clock design. We can use this to get an understanding of how the sacred calendar works. The beginning of the clock is when the days and the nights are equal sometime around March the 20th. Mm -hmm. That's when the sun enters what we know as the fourth gate where it stays there for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And we learn this all from the book of Enoch 
in his book on the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. That's in first Enoch. But what we find out is that after the sun enters the fourth gate there in March, it spends 30 days before it goes to the fifth gate where it spends 30 days and then it stays 31 days in the sixth gate. Okay. That is what we call the spring season, 91 days long. The summer season has the same pattern, 30, 30, and 31 days, making the 91 days of summer before we enter back into gate three there at the beginning of fall. Mm -hmm. The thing about it, you notice that the sun always enters gate three sometime around September the 18th. I see that. In fact, the first new moon after September the 18th will begin the fall season. Okay. That would be the day we know as Yon Teruah or the Memorial of Blowing of Trumpets. But what's important to note here is how it always starts after September the 18th. Mm -hmm. So if we can't have Yon Teruah or the Memorial of Blowing of Trumpets on an earlier date than September the 18th, that means that the earliest, that the first day of the seventh month can fall on September the 18th. You're saying that the first day has to start on September 18th? Or after. Okay. It cannot start earlier. Okay. My point is, is that the Feast of Tabernacles is always 14 days later. Mm -hmm. So even if you have the new moon to fall on September the 18th, mm -hmm. that means the earliest possible date for the Feast of Tabernacles is October the 3rd. Right. So in other words, Tabernacles almost always falls in October. Okay. So the reason why they were celebrating the first Thanksgiving, the reason why they was giving thanks in October, they was giving thanks during the harvest festival that we call Tabernacles. Mm -hmm. That's why it was in October. Okay. So in other words, these pilgrims came to the new world so they could celebrate Tabernacles in peace. Okay. So these people coming over on the new world had the mark of our father because they were keeping his feast days mm -hmm. in the proper season. Mm -hmm. In fact, when you look at the Thanksgiving in Canada, they still celebrate it in October. As of today? As of today. Their Thanksgiving celebrations are in October. The thing about it, back in 1789, George Washington changed the feast day known as Tabernacles here in America. He changed it to Thanksgiving by moving the date from October to November. Hmm. Okay. Why did he do that? You want my opinion on why he did it or you want to read <laughs> this document? We know that he changed it and it definitely has to do something probably with the father and him knowing this. Well, like we talked about earlier, keeping the Feast of Tabernacles puts our father's mark on the people. Mm -hmm. But George Washington, being a representation of the beast, would have wanted our father's mark on the people being the last thing that he needed right. to run a successful government. Mm -hmm. So he would have changed the date in order that the people wouldn't get that mark on them that they would have normally gotten by keeping the Feast of Tabernacles. So he changed it to November. Right. And by doing so, since, like I said, he was a representation of the beast, he took away the mark of our father for Tabernacles and instilled the mark of the beast for Thanksgiving. So by changing it from the appointed day in October, he changed it to another day in November, causing um, us to be under the mark. Yeah. So people, even till this day, the majority of the people have no idea what Tabernacles is or when it is. Mm -hmm. Will wait around and celebrate Thanksgiving instead mm -hmm. as a replacement which we talked about in our last class is the golden calf. Mm -hmm. They are celebrating Tabernacles as a replacement for our Father's Festival Day, which automatically makes it the golden calf. Anything that replaces our Father, whether it be money, 
or pharmacia or anything that our father offers us, whenever we come up with a replacement for him, we are worshiping the golden calf. Right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So do you think that this also have anything to do with um, Halloween as well? Well, like we talked about at the beginning, all of the pagan holidays are the mark of the beast, all of them. And it's really important for us to understand this is that we get the mark of our father by keeping his feast days. And we understand that the beast is the government. All you got to do is read Daniel to understand that the beast system is the government. Mm -hmm. And so by keeping the holidays on the government sanctioned calendar, you have the mark of the beast. Just like by keeping the holidays or the holy days on our father's calendar, you have the mark of our father. By keeping those other ones, you have the mark of the beast. But I'm glad you brought up how you talked about the appointed times because one of our viewers pulled out this verse to me a little bit earlier today. Mm hmm. Over here in Isaiah chapter 14, if you would read verse 13. Okay. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. So this is talking about Lucifer, like we see there in verse 12. Mm -hmm. This is Lucifer saying that he's going to ascend into heaven and put his throne above the stars of God. And he's going to sit upon the mount of the congregation. Mm -hmm. But notice this word here where it says mount of the congregation. He's going to set his throne upon the mount of the congregation. Mm hmm. Thing about it, when we come and we look at the interlinear Bible for Isaiah 14 and 13, down there where it says of the congregation, we see Strong's number 4150, which is talking about Moed. Okay. The thing about this word Moed, that's where you hear the word Moedim. Mm -hmm. This is the word used for feast days. Mm. So in other words... When you read this verse replacing Mount of the Congregation with Moedim or Feast Days, what Lucifer was saying that he was going to do was he was going to elevate his throne. He was going to exalt his throne above God by setting it on the Feast Days. In other words, he was going to set his Feast Days on top of our Father's Feast Days or mm. stamp them out, wow. replace them. Mm-hmm. So that's what's actually going on here when you have the president, President Washington, replacing tabernacles with Thanksgiving. Wow. He, he has, in the place of Lucif Lucifer, I can't even pronounce it, he has stamped out our father's Feast of Tabernacles, replacing it with his own Feast of Thanksgiving. Yeah, it seems like that has been done with all the feast days. Replacing all of them. Yeah, Hanukkah. In fact, when we read in chapter one of the book called First Maccabees, we find out that Antiochus Epiphanes, during the time that we now know as Hanukkah, burned a pig on Christmas Day. I remember hearing about that. That was his Christmas celebration, was sacrificing a pig on the altar of the Most High. I wonder if that's the reason that ham is so popular during, during Christmas. Christmas? <laughs> Very well could be being in direct violation of the dietary laws mm -hmm. and the fact that they sacrificed it on Christmas Day as a Christmas ceremony about 150 or 160 years before the birth of our Messiah. Right. Is another example of how Satan is trying to stamp out our father's feast days. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's very interesting about how he... Um, not only says that he will set his throne above the stars of the Most High, but that he will um, come in and um, set his throne up. I guess just wiping out the feast days or having them in such confusion that basically you have wiped them out. Nobody is doing them properly. This is all an attempt to erase our father's name altogether. You, get, you have people who around the world think they are giving thanks to our creator. Mm -hmm. But in fact, they're only really giving thanks to the government. Right. Insincerity. Or the beast. You know, it's a lot of people um, 
who do not do the um, holidays um, participate uh, very wholly in Thanksgiving because, um, you know, they are thinking that it's neutral and it's not one of those uh, pagan holidays. And so they are giving thanks to who they say, um, well, they are giving thanks to the Father. So what do you say about um, when people say that I'm not doing that, I'm just giving thanks to our Father? I say, what was you doing on Tabernacles when you were supposed to be? Right. When And what are you doing on Hanukkah when you're supposed to be giving thanks? Why are you doing it on Thanksgiving? Simply because you're told to? You know, the people give the example, you know, our parents always told us if everybody else was jumping off the cliff, would you jump off the cliff, too? But that's exactly what's going on. The world is is head over heels for the beasts and the mark of the beasts and the golden calf. And so they're celebrating Thanksgiving while the chosen few are keeping tabernacles and Hanukkah. So, like I said, I asked him, where were you at on the correct feast day? Right. You know, you always say that it's comes down to it it's always about this calendar and it's always about feast days it's all about these feast days because that's what gives the mark that's what marks us as his people without keeping the feast days in their proper season we have to do it on the right day we can't just do it anytime we want to by keeping the feast days in the right day it's when we establish ourselves as his people if we do it on a different day or if we don't do it at all we establish ourselves as heathen That's what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. That's why the Messiah went through all of the feast days talking about that it was an acceptable year of the Lord. And and what he did was he taught the disciples the feast days and how to keep them properly, what to do on them, doing away with all of the Jewish traditions and showing them exactly what they were supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And when we look, it was in 1942 that the United States Congress designated the fourth Thursday in November as Thanksgiving, solidifying it to that date. So Mm -hmm. no matter what you think about it, no matter how we feel about it, simply by changing the October Festival of Tabernacles to the November Festival of Thanksgiving, sealed it as the mark of the beast. So Thanksgiving is one of among many thanksgiving Mm -hmm. is the mark of the beast right guess we'll do another video like this for christmas yeah Mm -hmm. in the meantime let's get prepared for hanukkah and the other festival days including the sabbath day at least for those of us who plan on being counted in that number